Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Lloyd, folks, as we ever do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can get Tim's newsletter by going over to Ord, O-R-D, hyphen oracle.com. That's Ord, hyphen oracle.com. Tim Lloyd, what's going on, brother? All right. Uh, actually, we're going to review another well, the same chart is the um, okay. summation index. We kind of been following it for the last couple of weeks. Yes. And so chart number one is that summation index. It's just kind of a, a uh, just a quick review. Okay. Uh, this uh, summation index needs to get below minus uh, 700. Yep. And then, then from there, it needs to rally to plus 1,000. And you like to have have that happen within two months or, two, or around two months. Yes. It doesn't have to be the exact day. But anyhow, but back on October 27th, we had 813, uh, we had minus 813 on the summation index. And this is yesterday's close. Uh, today's actually going to be a little bit higher, but yesterday's close. And so anyhow, two months added to October 27th comes out December 27th. And so yesterday was two months. And the summation index closed yesterday at uh, 1,033. Oh, man. So, you got to love so, this. Wow. Yeah, so it, it met the parameters. And uh, if you look at the chart, it goes back to 2007, looks like. And I listed all the times. The red lines are when the summation index hit below minus 700. The red lines are the times when the summation reached uh, plus 1,000. Yes. And all of them predicted... Uh, you know, a major run to the market. Uh, matter of fact, it, it appeared at the uh, last, well, it appeared last year, 2022. We had a decent, well, we had a great run this year. We're up, uh, S&Ps were up 24%. Uh, it picked, it, uh, picked out the low of 2020, the COVID crash, you know, and that thing yes. went, went way up. So now we got another uh, situation. So that predicts 2024, Probably will be an up, you know, a double digit up year. You know? and, and that'll so blow people's minds. 10, 10% to 99%. So. I know. And, you know, folks, if you've been following Tim and myself, you know, what's amazing about this is that, you know, in this particular one, we went right from the minus 813. And <laughs> the thing is, Tim, you know, it's so cool, man. It's crazy that it hit ex exactly at the two months. I mean, I, when you've been explaining to us, we know that it doesn't have to be two months to the day, but it is pretty cool that it was two months to the day, isn't it? It's like, wow. Yeah, it's two months to the day. And actually, you know, the uh, McCollum Oscar will be up again today above zero. That will predict the, the market or the summation actually index will be higher tomorrow. Okay. Uh, which is not a big deal, but anyway, we reached the parameters. You know, can it go higher? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we reached parameters. So 2024 looks like a pr pretty good year because this is not a short-term indicator. Yes. They're not saying every month going to be an up month, but it does say next year or the next 12 months most likely will be up. Right. A pretty high probability of time. So let's, fl let's flip to chart two. Okay. And where's the, where's the, where we're going to go? Um, well, you know, there's a couple of different things here. Uh, actually, we'll do the bottom window. The, the bottom window okay. is the SPX VIX ratio. Yep. And uh, back in uh, October, from October to I don't know, Jan or October to December 2021, the S&Ps were making higher highs, and this ratio was making lower highs. That's a that's a major divergence, uh, suggesting that the market's going to have a a pullback. Well, it it pulled back really good into uh, the October low. And uh, right now, the S&Ps are hitting higher highs, and this ratio is also hitting higher highs. But I also want to point out, if you draw a line uh, from the uh, uh, October high back in 2021, and you draw that line uh, connecting to the, uh, looks like July of 2022, uh, you can see that line went down on the S&Ps a little bit. But if you look at the ratio, that made a higher high. I see. I don't know. Yeah, I, I can so see that. A, I can see that. A bigger time frame, that's bullish. So that's, that's what I'm trying to point out. Yes. So even though the SPs right now are probably touching the highs of uh, 2021, and the ratio's already broke to new or higher highs. Right. 
so, so on, on a bigger time frame, that's really bullish. But even on a short-term time frame here, that's labeled in light blue. Uh, the S and P's were, were, you know, making higher highs along with that ratio. So the whole thing's all bullish as far as uh, the the VIX is concerned. And I'm, what I'm thinking, this pattern that is forming here is a head and shoulders bottom, and we just we're at, we broke the neckline right now this month. Uh, above that 4,600. So I'm thinking this whole thing is a head and shoulders bottom, which uh, which projects a head and shoulders bottom projects a, a, a minimum major target to around 5,700. Yeah, just stay, is, just stay right there, Tim. We get a quick break. And Tim and I are going to be right back, folks. We have the Dow up 99, NASDAQ's up 4, S&P's are up 1. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Oitomo Brown. We do appreciate you growling and prowling with us. And, uh, you know, Tim is showing us this head and shoulders uh, that he's looking at. And as Tim has told us many times, you know, you have to bust that with uh, a sign of strength. And, you know, Tim, I just did these numbers, man. I guess there's no doubt in December alone, we went up 240 S&P points, man. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm thinking so. It's, it's a logical break, and, you know, time will tell, but, you know, the VIX would show up bearish here, and it's not doing that on the bigger time frames anyhow. So I'm thinking this is a legitimate break, and and maybe we rally up, come back to the neckline at some point, and uh, we'll have to wait and see from there. But okay. Normally, when we break the neckline, that becomes support. So, yes. So uh, the worst scenario, I guess, in the next 12 months is 4,600. So uh, we'll see, but we can we can take a look at the short term now. So the okay. bigger trend, in my opinion, according to some H index, according to this uh, head and shoulders bottom, you know the trend's up next year. But on a short term basis, I got some minor divergences going on. So it's, if you want to, we can go to chart three. Awesome, I'm there. Yep. All right, chart three. Uh, the middle window is the TLT to VVIX ratio. Yes. So. Uh, t uh, TLT is the bonds, and the BBIX is the VIX of the VIX. The only reason why I'm using that, uh, it, it responds faster than the VIX. Okay. So actually, the VVX goes up before the VIX goes up. Uh, okay. So anyhow, it, it puts a little octane into the indicator a little bit, so you get a little bit, bit faster responses. But normally, as, as a, uh, I kind of listed there in pink the times where the SPs which is the bottom window, that's the SPY in the bottom window, is going up, and that ratio is making, as the SP is making higher highs, that ratio is making lower highs. Yeah, that went and, down uh, quite a bit, huh? I see that. Yeah, yeah. So right now, you know, it's, uh, you know, the SP has been going up for, you know, good, you know, I got long here a couple of weeks ago or something like that, and I kind of sold it because I've seen, this is one ratio that's that's showing a bearish sign. Right. Nothing real huge, but um, yeah, you, you sold um, you sold at the close yesterday. So let me ask you this: I know that in July, I mean that was the big deal in July. This thing came down pretty quick, huh? Didn't it? Interesting, man. Okay, yeah, yeah, it came back. You know that. Uh, so anyway, I, I sold yesterday. I'm not really hugely bearish here, right? But I, I'm thinking this is probably a trade. And we'll go through the next couple of charts. I think that may what develop. We'll have to wait and see. But okay. yeah, that's given a divergence. Uh, the TLT to VVX ratio is given divergence. And the next one, uh, this is on chart four. Okay. Uh, uh, this is the um, um, just the VIX. And it's kind of the same thing. If you look back in uh, the high of July, you know, the market was going up, and the VIX was making higher lows. Uh, and actually had a bullish scenario uh, uh, back in, uh, was it, I can't read, uh, December, early December. Uh, it started going up, and it, actually the VIX made lower lows. But if you notice over the last several days here, matter of fact, you even look today, if you got a, a, a chart, you know, the SPs right now are, up, uh, yeah, they're still up just a minor a bit, but the VIX is also up today. Right. Uh, just just on today. But if you look at the the far right, uh, the the current uh, pink area, I guess, which is a little bit brighter pink than the other areas, if you notice, uh, the VIX is making higher 
uh, yeah, higher lows as the S&P is making higher highs. And uh, that's that's also a kind of a divergence. So we've got two different things going on in here. Yeah, because uh, like even four days ago, the VIX really popped. And then it came back. And as you said, I mean, because four days ago, what happened, folks, is that you had two separate days that, you know, we popped up to that 1449. And now you're back to 1253, but you're still up 10 ticks. No, I get what you're saying. Okay, cool. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So... So I have it. So anyhow, so I'm thinking at least you got some very signs. It's on top, you know, you know, at bottoms, you, you get a blowout, you know, and yes. everybody runs to the the door. So bottoms, you can get closer to a bottom than you can usually at a top. You know, if you hit a top at the exact day, you know, in my opinion, you're just lucky. Right. But anyhow, you got some signs here. So I'm thinking now you move to chart five. Okay. And. Uh, well, I, I circled uh, two big volume days yes. on, on, the, on the volume chart there. And a lot of times those big volume days are tested at some point. And you got two basically in the same vicinity. Um, so I'm thinking this is a rising wedge going on here. And uh, you may see a pop down to test those big volume days. And that's all. Yeah, I'm not looking for a big decline because right. we got, you know, if you, on the monthly chart, you know, your neckline's at 4,600 neckline. So that's the worst case scenario, I think, is 4,600 on the S&Ps. And, but I think you may pull back there maybe in January, first part of January. Right. And if and you're looking that, at the SPY right now, folks, where Tim is pointing out, we're at 477.07. Well, the number he's looking at with that big volume day is, is four. It goes from 470 to 467, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, four. Yeah, so yeah, around yeah, the four, six, yeah, eight, whatever, somewhere yes. in that vicinity, right. and that's just you know the old technical analysis rising oh, wedge yeah. pattern. You hit yep. new highs, volumes dropping off, right? And uh, it, you, you see a re reaction, you know, and this is probably would help to bump up the trend too. You know, you get these panic down days because normally when these rising wedges do take effect, you know, you're talking extremely fast declines. Yes. Uh, you know, right. And so that may pop the trend up. Maybe we get lucky and get a, a two or three day, uh, day on the trend, which will be bullish. And uh, that will line up for another trade to the upside. We'll have to wait and see. But if you look at the bottom window there on this chart, too, you can actually really see how the VIX is going here. The S&Ps are making higher highs. You can see the, the VIX is making higher uh, lows. Uh, you know, that's very yes. divergent. Also, right. you can see, even though today's up a little bit, not a lot, you can see the VIX is actually higher than yesterday's close. Yeah, and you know, so, it's interesting, too, Tim, on your five-day arms, you're going to have that 3.69 fall off today. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So we need, you know, we need some kind of energy to uh, going forward here so you get these little declines, so you get that, you know, five-day 10 trade back right. up where they need to be. Right. So nothing real bearish, but... Uh, yeah, that's, I think it's just a trade, you know, if things are kind of extended and volume's light. So I got a couple of divergences. So am I going to play a short side? Probably not. But, no, because I, no, I get that. You're threading the needle, man. I get it. It's pretty cool. I know, yeah, it's good. You, yeah, you get, you get, yeah, you start threading the needle, and you know, I've, I've done that too many times. You yeah. get left behind. But I do think some sort of a pullback may happen here. Right. Probably within the next Which week totally or so, makes sense, uh, man, because, because of these this run has been extraordinary. There's no doubt. And you know, we have folks, okay? You know, we had just got a call prior to you coming on, Tim, and, you know, this uh, gentleman was talking about, you know, tax selling, and, you know, because he's made some money in the gold market and he has a couple gold stocks that are no good. And, and you know, what does happen, folks? I mean, you know, the. The Nasdaq's up 55% this year. <laughs> so I'm sure yeah. there's, you know, there's folks that, you know, uh, are going to take some of that money. So, you know, the real bottom line is that are they taking it this year or is it a January 3rd phenomenon, which we have seen many times, okay? Stay right there. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. We have the Dow Industrials up 105, Nasdaq's up 11, S&Ps are up 3. Uh, don't forget, you can get Tim's newsletter by going to ord, ord oracle.com Come right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Oitomo Brown. We do appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow up 104, Nasdaq's up 11, S&Ps are up uh, 250, that's 2.50, and we are kicking into the new year right now. We're going over some uh, charts with our man, Mr. Tim Ord. Okay, cool, Tim. I'm ready. Uh, 
Um, all right, so chart five, anyhow, this, like I said, is probably a, could be a rising wedge and nothing real significant to the downside, but probably go back to, I think it was a December 20th low. And, um, and, and that's it. And from there, you know, the bigger trends up. So a little chop probably next week. So, uh, chart number five. Six. Yeah, yeah. I just want to just want one thing sure. that you had said, Tim. I just sure. want to go over this for the listeners once again. So it's important if you if you caught what Tim said, folks. Okay, when you have a rising wedge, right? And he's looking for the the bar, the uh, December well, December what? I'm sorry, Tim. December De the December twentieth, I think it was. Okay, cool. December twentieth low. That's that big. Black I got bar, it. Yeah. Uh, because what does yeah. happen on a rising wedge, folks? As Tim said when he was going through this is that that when you get a pullback it's normally fast and furious man <laughs> so you might think the end of the world is coming in and there's no such thing <laughs> anyway i i just wanted right. to bring that up again because when you mentioned it you know we've traded a few of those over our years tim and it's pretty cool <laughs> yeah and, and so normally when they get down what we're going to hope for is that trend yes on a daily basis jumps up and that kind of puts fuel back into the five and ten day panic you know trends exactly and, and so you know if you, that if that ten day trend gets down to like you know point nine point eight a lot of times those come near highs right so you you always want to feed that trend to hopefully stay up around one point two or higher and if it does then you got fuel to push that market higher because the fuel the panic is a fuel to push more. You know, you know, Joe Granville always said, you know, the market climbs a wall of worry. Oh yeah, and 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 that was back in the eighties when he said that. He's I, I doubt anybody remembers him anymore, but we do though. I mean, Karen, yeah, listen, we, we do. Yeah, I had him yeah. on a lot, man. He was awesome, man. I I did. And if you heard him, folks, okay, you'd always say that. Yeah, you get the generals, and then the what the. the the generals would leave first. The generals leave first, or the uh, the, the the troops. No, the, the, the generals. Yeah, the generals take off from the bottom, and you yeah. the, the troops or whatever right, right. follow later. So, but yeah, right. he had a lot of good points. You know, when he said the wall of worry, he didn't really understand. I don't think you know the panic aspect of it. He didn't oh, know no, how to yeah, engage that's that. That's for sure. No, yeah. I yeah know. And so I took that, I always thought about that, and I'm thinking, well, how are you going to find panic in the market? So that's how I got to the trend. Yes. Because if you, if you break down the trend, you know, panic forms when all the stocks are down and all the volume are on the down stocks. Well, that's panic. Well, the trend helps to define what that looks like, and that's usually what happens when the trend gets up around two, you know, two and a half, three, or even sure. higher. Yeah. So that's so I put a, put a definition to that wall of worry thing. It's a beautiful so, thing. But, I like it. Yeah, it, yeah, it works pretty good. So oh, it you works know, great. Panic, Listen, man, you've been sign. showing these charts you know. that that I, well, especially the, just the last panic, man. The last one we got that three point something. That was a one day wonder, man. That was it, right? I mean, it's not yeah, like we, that was it. Yeah, right. Yeah, actually, uh, that was on uh, December twentieth. That's that big candle down there. Okay, perfect. I got it. Okay, cool. I got it. Yep. So, uh, and also there's another indicator too. There's a there's a two day trend. If you get a two day trend that adds up to four, uh, so you can have one day at two point five, another day at one point five. Yep. You buy that. You buy that trend. You you buy that close because they're not going to let you in the next day. Okay, and folks. So remember, do, this yeah, program's archived. So all these little tidbits that Tim's giving us, okay? <laughs> write them down, man. Write them down. In the program. Don't write them yeah. down if you're driving right now and you're listening on your radio. <laughs> but write them down. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that two-day trend. We're getting Tim Owen secrets. <laughs> what, what, yeah, it was, it was actually well, it was three point nine three. Okay. So you know, not exactly four, but it's close enough. So. Yeah. But but if you bought it on the close, you know you had a what a one two three four five day rally here. So right, uh, All right. But anyhow, that's that's just a short term trade. Doesn't last forever. But if you get a two day trend that adds up four buy it on the market or buy market on the close. Nice. Because there, there's usually no tests or anything. It just gaps up and goes just keeps going. Um, we, we can flip to chart six now. Or we have more questions on part I'm, of chart. No, five. I'm ready. We're at six. Okay, cool. All right. This is just momentum indicator measures the uh, up volume and down volume. The, uh, the what I found worked the best is uh, up down volume to really get the trend in the market. And that's the bottom window on this chart. 
and it's a 50-day average of uh, of G, the components in GDX and up down volume percent. Yes. And so when it's basically above zero, the market's in an uptrend. When it's below zero, market's in a downtrend. And it's pretty much as simple as that. So right, and when I did this chart today, it was like plus four and change, which is kind of like the midpoint of where it usually goes, even though the market's off today a couple of percent. Okay. Uh, if it stays above zero, normally that's a good sign. The uh, the rally in general uh, probably would continue. So it's just a momentum indicator on up down volume, and that's that's all it is. Okay. It, it, uh, uh, I can, there's some other stuff on the chart, but what's important is the uh, momentum. So let's flip to uh, chart seven. Okay. And uh, this is a uh, the charts that you wanted. This is a, this takes a bigger chunk out of the market, and uh, the bottom window is the cumulative advanced decline, and the next window up is the cumulative up down volume on the weekly time frame. So, uh, all the all the blue time frames is when the that, those indicators close above the mid Bollinger band, and the red indicators or the red lines are uh, cases when the, the cumulative up down volume advanced decline indicators close below their mid Bollinger band. And it got a little whippy here back in October, November. We went for a buy, went through a sell. Yeah. And we've been on a buy for about, oh, mid-November. And both indicators are still well above the mid-Bollinger band. Uh, this is today's reading. Okay. So this is a weekly time frame. So it, it, takes out, uh, it, it takes out all the, you know, the whipsaws, I guess. Some it, of the noise, yeah. You, is yeah. look at the bigger trend. And so this chart helps to do that. So this chart can give uh, signals that could last a month or two, sometimes even three. Okay. And sometimes you get you get whippy, but in general, it's meant to uh, trigger a multi-month rally. Uh, most of the times it does that. Uh, sometimes it doesn't. But as long as it's above, both those indicators are above mid Bollinger Band. You're usually got uh, energy to the upside that can carry the market higher. So. Whatever's going on right now on the bigger time frames is probably still up. We're, we're not seeing any really major diverses. Both of the up down volume advanced client indicators are above the mid Bollinger band. So uh, on an intermediate term basis, this still looks bullish so far. And so how long does it remain bullish? Until they close below the mid Bollinger band. And so when's that? I don't know. But it's a momentum indicator. But this is a weekly. Time Which is frame. sweet. I yeah. see we're running out of time again. No, that's all right. We, um, Tim and I, we got one more chart. We're going to do it as soon as we come back, folks. We have the Dow Industrials up 78, Nasdaq's up 8, S&P's a flat. And don't forget, folks, you can get Tim's newsletter by going over to ord, O-R-D, hyphen, oracle.com. Tim and I come right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Ward, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growling and prowling with us as we're kicking into... 2024, folks. Pretty amazing. Okay, Tim, uh, you want to go to that last chart? Well, okay. No, we can stay on this one. Repeat we this chart, uh, uh, chart number seven. This is a quick repeat, but anyhow, yeah, that's the weekly chart of cumulative advanced decline. Okay. And the both of them are right now are above the mid Bollinger Band, which is bullish. So that projects, uh, you know, maybe you got a month, maybe three months of rally. You know, you're not for sure, but anyhow, the weekly charts for the momentum up down volume advanced client indicators are bullish so let's flip to chart number eight okay and okay now this is the same chart uh they're both uh, but it's on the monthly time frame and this is a chart that you want to see close above the mid bollinger band i get it i see gets the the yearly i mean most of these signals last a year uh they can last actually uh, four years because last time this chart gave a signal was back in January, it looks like about January 2021, three years ago. So and this is the chart Celtic. that we need above that mid Bollinger Band. That's the bottom yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. Right. It, both those indicators need to give a, above that mid Bollinger Band and uh, and normally they're not whippy. You know, once they get above them, normally okay. you start to trend. So what this projects, if they both do, and the weekly says you got a good chance if the market can rally over you know next month maybe two yes if that can happen which is logical on the weekly time frame on the up down volume advanced client indicators most likely that will push the monthlies above 
the mid Bollinger Band. Right. And if that's the case, then that would project at least 2024 is going to be an up year, and could be even 2025. So, because right now, I uh, mean, we're right underneath it in both of them, right? I can see that. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, the second one up, uh, the, mid, the mid chart there is right smack at it. Any, yes. Any minor strength will most likely push that above it. But the bottom window, which is the up down volume, you're, you're, you're not a long ways from it. You know, a decent rally over the next month may, may push it. And that could open the door for, uh, you know, a year, maybe two years of rally. Yeah, I so love it. Well, maybe. listen, man, we appreciate all the great education in 2023. We look for more in 2024. Happy New Year, Tim. Thank you. Stay right there. Well, I'll do the update, folks. We're right back.